how did you start? Because I guess for many, many people, it's really hard to, to start a YouTube channel. Like for me, yes. I can remember when we saw us the, the first time in Ignite, I, I could really, I could not start. I knew I want to make YouTube videos. I knew this is something for me, it's a passion. Even I didn't try it, but I knew that there is something for me, but I didn't know how to start. And what you told me was so simple, but so effective. What's up guys? I'm here in Bern city with my friend Charlie. Nice. Today we have an interview about how to start a YouTube channel. He started his YouTube channel from scratch and is now pretty successful. And I thought it's from great value for you to watch it and to get, his, get to know his story. So I love you guys. Stay tuned. Thanks for having me. I realized when I started for the first time and how it was for me. So I'm always like glad to like support other people, man. I think it's really cool. So we start with the first question, which is why did you start with YouTube? Mm. Yeah, to be honest, back then I was still at university and it was nice, you know, but I was not really creating anything. I was not really providing value. I was just like consuming stuff. And I love YouTube as a, as a, as a, as a, like, um, as a website or as a tool to, to share value. I consumed a lot of YouTube videos mm -hmm. and I always admired people that were doing something with their lives, you know, people that knew where they are going. Mm -hmm. So then I decided, yeah, man, I'm young. I have a lot of free time. I should start something. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, it was not just my own idea. I also had people in my life that knew I wanted to start, but I first did videos for another channel. Uh, but I always tried stuff out and I decided, yeah, I want to share some value and I want to improve my skills in some area that fits my personality. And now I found that tool and I honestly love it. Just the, the combination between sharing value, improving your skills and reaching all the people, like the whole social aspect. Like really, I really, I totally, I love that. That's really nice. And also if you don't have a lot of subscribers, even the fact that perhaps one of your videos could go viral or like viral like in the beginning like viral for me was like 1000 views i know you also have one with 1000 views and just the idea that 1000 people could see your video could see your your idea and especially if your intentions are good that's just something you were not able to do like like even 10 years ago or 20 years ago so that's like an awesome tool to share great stuff that's the reason why i started and that's the reason why i'm still like really passionate about it very cool. Thanks so much for sharing. No worries, man. That just reminds me of me. I always want to sh share my ideas. And I think YouTube is just a great idea to, to share your ideas, to share your knowledge, to, yeah, to, to build also a community yes. Yes. where you can support each other. I mean, I mean the thing that passionates the, me the most right now is in my social circle. Mm -hmm. um, back in the days before I started, I had some friends that shared the same interest as me, but not in every aspect, you know, like I had some friends in the gym, mm -hmm. but I also had some friends in a, in, a, in, a, in a book club, you know, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But since I started with YouTube and I'm really like passionate about what I'm talking about mm -hmm. and I share my personality, people that are even more like me step into my life. And also like from the other gender, I also had like amazing meetings with like with like girls especially that fit, fitted me even more because they knew me from before and you just attract more people that fit your personality that fit your life and it's kind of an upward spiral if you do it right you know that's also like pretty 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 interesting and mind-blowing if you think about it because back in the day you just had to like live with your friends and your friends were from your same village and a small village mostly has like the the, the same ideas, the same mindsets, and you also always have the same mindsets. You know, don't don't evolve. So YouTube, for that reason, is also a really really cool tool. I want to address something that you said. Mm -hmm. You were in the beginning, you were consuming a lot mm -hmm. in YouTube, and I just see that with myself. It's YouTube is such a big world where you can uh, get so many informations, and for me, it was sometimes really overwhelming to see all those people talking about different stuff mm -hmm. and. How did you feel when you were just consuming mm. the videos, you know, for, for, for other people who maybe just watch YouTube videos instead of creating something, you know? Like, to be honest, like being on screen and doing your own YouTube videos is the most fun you can have, actually, like for me especially. But it also comes with a disadvantage because especially 
when I started and you, you remind me a lot of, of me when I started because some people, let's be honest, they made like fun of my accent and how I was talking and your English is not the best right now but I totally know if you just like push through it your English will become so much better and people will make less fun of you in the beginning like it's totally normal you know mm. and I'm saying that as an encouragement because it's also like was a was a thing for me like you don't just like make videos you'll improve as a person it's, it's weird because if you have a, a bigger goal in your life perhaps it's YouTube perhaps it's like getting in shape perhaps you want to lose like 20 pounds mm -hmm. but if you always have a big goal you aspire to like you will always get some obstacles in, in, in the way of to going toward, towards that goal. Like for example, if you do YouTube videos, you're unmotivated, people make fun of you, the, the sound's not working. Always it's little obstacles, obstacles, but if you just push through it, it kind of trains you to become another person, you know? If you're getting more and more successful, you need to have more skills, you need to become more present, because if you're not present in front of the camera, the, the video is shitty and people realize that, you know, that's like really a cool thing. It doesn't need to be YouTube, but it needs to be a bigger goal you aspire to have. And if you are just in, the, in this consumer mindset of consuming stuff, just buying stuff, you feel stuck and you kind of move like down, you know? That's also like a, a fear I have. Yeah. Yeah, this is what I would say. Great, thank you. No thank you very much. Uh -huh. Yeah, great. So let's move to the next question. Now we address the why. I think it's, re it's really important to know why you did something because that's what motivates you, what drives you and brings you to the, to the success in the end. If you really want to do it and you know why you do it. Other question is, how did you start? Because I guess for many, many people it's really hard to, to start a YouTube channel. Like for me, yes. I can remember when we saw us the, the first time in Ignite, I, I could really, I could not start. I knew I want to make YouTube videos. I knew this is something for me, it's a passion. Even I didn't try it, but I knew that there is something for me, but I didn't know how to start. And what you told me was so simple, but so effective. So yeah, let the people know what you would, how you started and what you would recommend them to how to start. Good, man. I hope I remember what I told you because it's like <coughs> like two years ago, August 2016. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah. I also had blonde hair back then. <laughs> so um, yeah, what I what I would tell people is the biggest thing that's holding you back is uh, your perfectionism because it's easy to look at that video and you see like the shot is good. Uh, I'm talking like fluently, you know. I'm like pretty chill and everything. It's easy to see that. But then if you start your first video, you will always have this fantasy in your head of the perfect video, but you will never achieve this perfect video. It's still for me, like I have this idea of my perfect video, but you will never reach that, you know? So the first thing I would say is forget about perfectionism and um, still at the same time, what I would do differently, I mean, I'm, I'm happy where I am, but if people would start right now is do like a mix between perhaps 20%, 30% of research, you know, research, what is the YouTube algorithm, uh, how should I frame the video, what is really important, how to design thumbnails. But then as soon as you have the knowledge, as soon as you have like the 80-20, just focus on like pumping out videos and doing just the best you can, and especially in the beginning, uh, just do as many videos as you can do, and do just, I mean, when you upload a video, if it's 80% as good as you could do the best, uh, just upload it. That's like my kind of rule. It was always my kind of rule. And it's really, really, really good. Also, a thing I could recommend if you're hardcore, uh, do like a 30 day video challenge. Do one video every day for 30 days, no excuses. I did it when I was working full time. And then what happens is you get used to do videos in a in an uncomfortable situation or when you think I have no time at all. For example, when I've met my ex-girlfriend back in the day, um, I had to do, I was during that time and I told her, yeah, I can meet you, but I need to take the camera with me. I need to record a YouTube video. And I did that with a couple of girls actually, it was pretty funny. Um, and yeah, it's like a really, really cool, cool tool. So in the beginning, I would really like invest in your skills and also like think really long term. When I started with my YouTube channel, I said, okay, if I start with it, I do it for like five years. I don't stop for five years. I mean, I had some breaks here and there, mm -hmm. yeah. but think long term and so many people are so impatient. So many people want instant gratification and I understand it with social media, it's, it's, a, it's really like hardcore, but really think like long term, like at least like one year, one year of like experimenting, doing stuff and just sticking to it. That's like the thing I would say. And also I started with just my, my, um, my phone. 
and phones have such good quality don't buy like the best equipment buy like such a microphone for like 60 bucks your phone and you are good to go no excuses awesome thank you so much no worries. that just reminded me on something i wanted to address which i now forgot so let's take a minute and yeah, let's just brief um <laughs> oh yeah 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 no no good when i go back and remind myself what you told me me personally how to start my youtube channel was really simple and i can remember i had here i had a um, umfall what's umfall in english an accident i had an accident with my bicycle and here was everything like blood it was really it was it didn't look nice yeah and oh, then we've met then right yeah oh, yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I, I told him, it's just an excuse, but I told him, hey, yeah, how, how do I start? I, I want to make YouTube videos. And look, look with this, I need to wait until this is gone, on, until it's healed. And he said, just start, just do a video, d d d fuck off. What, you, you, you said, um, doesn't matter, just, just do a video, just do it r with that. Don't think about it, just do it. And how he said it so so calm and so like yeah it's it's the no the most normal thing in the world to mm -hmm. just do a video i thought yeah yeah why not so i did the video i think two days after you told me that and this video is one of the best videos i did it has over 600 views mm, yeah and then yeah, yeah. yeah that was that was for me cool to see yeah. and the funny thing is then what you also addressed that People are so impatient. Like, I thought, now this video was successful, in my view, how I look, looked at it. And um, I thought every other video will also be like that. And then it didn't, it didn't, and that made me, frustrated me. It was really frustrating for me. And on one point I was thinking about giving up and it makes no sense and so on and so on. But I just did it and at the moment my videos, I have, um, 10, 15 views and I could, in the beginning it was a little bit painful but now I see the long term like you addressed, thinking long term think about when you start do it for one year minimum or even yeah, five years yeah. and yeah. yeah but also if you make breaks don't, think about the long term picture, I also did breaks and that's totally okay yeah. so yeah. also I would say yeah yeah, yeah, talk, talk, my man. I want to add something also because I had some good experience right now with YouTube. But if I could go back, I mean, for my journey, I would change anything because I'm happy where I am. And now, um, yeah, I mean, it is what it is, right? I'm really happy about it. Mm. But if I could mentor somebody, um, I would say think really long term, but at the same time, don't be stupid. In the beginning, what I did, man, like, I was not really informing myself about the YouTube algorithm. Mm. I had no idea about the YouTube algorithm, I had no idea how it worked. My thumbnails were not, I mean, they were good, but you know, they weren't, they weren't that optimal also. And just like, inform yourself also about the YouTube algorithm, because it's cool to say, yeah, like focus on the long term, like five years. Mm. But if you could, if you could, um, if you could do one or two things better in the beginning, just little things, you could perhaps cut your learning curve or your, your YouTube's uh, curve up from like about like one year for like one year or something, you know what I mean? Mm. So also don't be like too overly optimistic because I know, I know you're a, totally the guy that is overly optimistic mm. and don't use it to just rationalize, you know, also use it to like also think because it, it, it's normal to have 15 views in the beginning. Yeah. But if you still have 15 views in like six months, also think a little bit like, Ooh, what, what's wrong, man? Well, where do you fuck up? You know, also be a little bit like, like smart about it, I would say. Yeah, that makes totally sense. It's like, it's a long-term journey where you, where you learn all the time. So where you get better, where you think about what you can improve. Like you said, not being stupid. That makes totally sense. And yeah, it inspires me also to see what, what can I improve at the moment. Think long term, but don't be stupid. I like that. Very cool. So another thing that I wanted to ask you is, one issue for me is to find my niche. I know I need to give myself some credit and some some time to fi to figure out my niche and to do stuff, try stuff, experiment. And I want to ask you, how did you find your niche? That's good, man. That's good. Um, I really like Gary Vaynerchuk in this regard. 
because he talks a lot about the knowing yourself. So I would really like go hardcore like knowing yourself. And if if I tell people, um, <coughs> for example, I tell people, hey, you should know yourself. People think they already know themselves. But trust me, man, 99% of people have no fucking clue. For example, am I allowed to swear on your channel? I guess it's cool, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, good, man. <laughs> for example, when I tell people, have you done the Myers-Briggs test? Have you done the Myers-Briggs test? Okay, he hasn't done it. So 99% of people don't know Myers-Briggs test. It's a personality test from the, one of the biggest psychologists out there. I mean, sure, psych, psych, psychological tests are not like, like set in stone, but still it's a tool to use. Mm -hmm. And there's also the Hexaco test and just do as many personality tests as you can that are like good, good personality tests, like not, not, some, not that, like some woo-woo stuff, mm -hmm. but do personality tests, like let's check it out. Am I, am I extroverted? Am I introverted? I was just reading a book about hypersensibility. Are you a sensible person? Read books about that. Know exactly who you are. Ask friends uh, from feedback. Like what I did like a year ago or something, I told, asked my best friends, hey, be harsh with me. What is my biggest strength? What is my biggest weakness? Mm -hmm. Nobody does that. It like, feels weird to ask like, what is my biggest weakness. But tell people, hey, you can tell me. Really know who you are. What are your interests? And also, what are you good at? It, like, it doesn't make sense to make videos about, like, let's say um, I am a really extroverted person and I like spirituality. That's good. Mm -hmm. But then if you do YouTube videos and you're not good at it, do something else. Like do podcasts, perhaps like good at talking, perhaps like you are better at writing, write some blog, you know what I mean? Mm. So uh, really know yourself, what you like. And how I just found my niche is I looked at, at different things. So one thing is, who am I? Who was I when I was 14 years old? Because our IQ tends to, to, to spike when we were 14. Mm -hmm. So who did you want to be at 14? Think about that. At 14, I was already uh, editing videos. That's one thing. Um, and then also ask yourself, what am I good at, of course. Mm -hmm. Also ask yourself, what did, I, what did I do for the last five years? I mean, if you're older, also what did I do for the last 10 years? It doesn't make sense, like, if you, for example, have been like a sales guy, um, to go in a totally other direction than you have been a sales guy for 10 years, combine it with something else, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, so really like think about the, this stuff also, what did I do before? And the last thing is, I would say, how can I give value to people? How can I make money? How can I give value to people? Because if you really want to do long term, man, you also need to make some money with it because you cannot just do YouTube videos for fun. It's funny, you know, in the beginning. Mm -hmm. But if you really want to do it long term and give most value to people, you also need to like create products and give value to people, stuff like that. So what need people, what, what's the value? And this is the thing I chose, chose for myself. So for example, my personal example is uh, back in the day, um, like perhaps people know my story. I had like an eating disorder when I was 15, 16. Mm -hmm. um, so I already thought a lot about food back then. I was already editing view, video, YouTube videos ba back then. I started to work out back then, mm -hmm. and right now I'm really passionate about nutrition, health, and exercise. So it's like it's a no-brainer. All these four things, boom, I have my thing. Mm -hmm. And for everybody, it could be something else. But this is like the way I approach that stuff. Very, very cool. I, I really like this topic because I think it's so, so, so important to know yourself and focus your attention on the thing you are really good at, and not also on so many things. That's a little bit the issue for me because I'm passionate about many things. Yes. And um, yeah, I always did a lot of things, but there is always something that that is that shines yeah. through all of the things you you're good at or that you like. And to figure out this one thing is really important. So for me, it's when I think about what I always did, and I also know it's my genius. So we approach that in the Mahima mindset, like genius and mission. My genius is creativity. Because I did so many things. I, I danced, I beatboxed, I, I, I love to sing, I love to paint, I love to create videos, I, I like to speak. Yeah. And those are so many things and I never knew how, where should I focus on. But on one point, through my coach, because I had someone who asked me deeper questions, so that also really helped me, I realized that my genius is creativity it's not one of the all the things i do it's the 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 thing inside of me that let me do all of that the ability the the the, the skill so this really helped me but how to to 
implemented in my daily life. I mean, I, I, I work every day on, on creative stuff, so I lived it already, but how to implement it in my YouTube channel, you know, how to make a YouTube channel and the brand of, out of it, I think this is a little bit tricky. Also, what I want to ask you is for the people watching, how did you find what your, like, your genius is? How can people find that out? What is the process? That's a good one. So, basically what we do, we... First of all, we, we start in our process, how we approach that, we start with self-love. Because if you start to love... Many people don't love themselves anymore. They try to be someone else. And in our society, some skills have more value than other skills. So if you, for example, in school, you were not... You were not very intelligent in ma mathematics and they just focus on that. That's what they think intelligent kids need to, to be good at. You think you, f you feel weird, you feel very weird. And that was for me the, the thing because I was, I was always very creative, but I, was, I could not concentrate in school because it was so boring for me. So the first step I would say is to love yourself, to come back to who you are and be okay with that, accept that. And if you're there, if you're there with, with tools, you can get there with tools like meditation and doing things that let you feel good, things that you just like. So if you're there, if you have the first, first step, if you have a foundation in the first step, you can go, you can discover what's your genius. You can go back into your past and see, like you said, what did you do? What did you like as a, as a, as a kid or as a teenager? What was your passion? What did you do? What, what was the thing that were just natural for you? Something. And if people don't have a passion, what do they do then? Because I know some people watching, they have no clue. If people don't have a passion, I would say they are, they are numb. You know, mm -hmm. they're numb. They're very numb. They're not connected to themselves anymore. And that happens a lot. A lot of people, they don't know what they, they, they don't feel anymore. And there I would say it's really important to, to go out and to ex experiment. That's also what I did. I tried a lot of things. So if you feel numb and you feel like you don't have a passion, you need to start come back to your body, connect to your body with, with exercise, training, fitness. It's a very, very good thing to, to feel yourself. And in general, go out into the world, be present, be present with, with what is and engage like yourself in it. I feel like stuff. this is too abstract to tell people just be present. Okay. What I would do, what I would do rather is, it's funny to say like it's being present, that if people are watching that video and they know what presence is, this is beautiful, but most people don't know what this means. So I would say, take some time off and do like nothing, like don't distract yourself, don't have a phone, go into a coffee shop, something like that, and just think and write and just think about like, like you said, some stuff I like to do, experiment, and then you kind of know what your passion is, I would say like that, yeah, just to like, yeah, what I would approach. I mean, your approach is good and you can both like combine it, I would say. Mm -hmm. Okay, very cool. So yeah, take time off, write things down, write your thoughts down is a very good thing. And then very soon, I guess you will discover your passion. Yeah. Okay. So next thing. Next thing. <laughs> I know it's, it's not just easy to have a YouTube channel. If you look if you go to YouTube and look, watch other people making great videos, it's, it, it seems so easy. But I know it's not always easy. So what's your biggest challenge in making YouTube videos? Just taking the time to actually do them. Because as soon as the camera rolls, if you have enough experience, um, it just mostly goes well. But for me, it's just to create the perfect environment so I can just like, you know, for example, if you always need to grab your camera, grab your microphone, grab everything, go out, set up the camera and everything, this will really diminish your, um, your probability to, to do them. So the biggest challenge for me is just to have a good environment to set the camera up. So I just need to push play and then like record it, you know, because always something happens. Like I'm living with all the people in an in apartment, like your roommate wants something from you, this and that. And for me, it's just to say no to distractions. Mm. This is the biggest, biggest thing, saying no to distractions and just like like doing them, I would say. Because, you know, coming up with topics and everything, if you're in the flow of doing stuff, it's, it's not that difficult, actually, this part. Mm -hmm. I always say, you, doing YouTube videos or like, like having a YouTube channel, it's simple, but it's not easy. Mm -hmm. Like the gym, it's simple. You know, just, just need to do these two or three things, 
but it's not easy because again people are not committed enough or they think like it's not that, that much work mm -hmm. so just to come up with the right not even the right moment but to have the, the habit set to do them actually I would say um, and this is also the second thing I want to address is my biggest learning because I know it will be the next question so um, my biggest learning is have the habit of doing YouTube videos, do as many videos as you can in the beginning and then like don't really stop, you know, always like for example what I would do is if you are in the flow of making a video um, do like the second video right after that because flow is really really important because right now I'm in the flow I can talk, you know, don't really think about it which is cool so if you have that flow state like do as many videos as you can at the same time so back in the day I did around three videos in the same shooting session Mm -hmm. uh, this is like a really cool thing to do, I would say. Um, yeah, this is it. And also my biggest learning as well, what I would say is if people want to start, as you said, you could always have like 15 views, 20 views in the beginning. But just one video needs to be more successful. People see that. Perhaps another YouTuber sees that. And then you have a collab, but then it adds up. You have your first 1,000 subscribers. It adds up, like for me also. Um, I, ha I was able to hang out with people that had like 700,000 subscribers. Uh, I had, uh, I was featured on a channel with a girl in Germany. She has, she has a, right now 1 million subscribers, I guess. She does like makeup videos, but I was at the same convention, you know. And um, what's cool about that is if you hang out with such people, because you do, you have a smaller channel, you also realize that they don't do a lot of different like stuff different than you, and it just adds up, adds up, adds up. So I would really like have a strong why. Um, more than one why and think about long term and then like just go go with it and I know this video is probably a lot of information so as soon as you have enough information like write down what what is the YouTube algorithm about what your niche is approximately about and then just start shooting videos and be authentic on the way and then you are kind of kind of set I would say yeah then it's good very very cool very good so I have one other question that popped in my mind yeah. and that is where did you get your ideas to make a video? For example, you said you make, you make on one shoot th th three, three videos. Mm -hmm. Or one, one day, three videos. Yeah, I did that back in the day when I was really hardcore into it, yeah. So how, how, did, did, how do you figure out the ideas to make a video or the topic, you know? Mm -hmm. That's some, sometimes difficult for me. Mm -hmm. And also to have the, the right title. I know that's really important to have yeah, a good title. So yeah, yeah, how you deal with now, that? Especially now. Yeah, that's actually a super cool question because as I said before, like learn about the YouTube algorithm mm -hmm. and this is one of the biggest advice I got from, uh, do you know Connor Murphy? Mm -hmm. He had like a YouTube channel with 1 million or 2 million subscribers and he's really known to be, to have the YouTube channel that, that went the most viral in the fitness community. His channel grew as fast as no other channel before, I believe. Mm -hmm. And he told me like, um, if he doesn't have a title for a video and the thumbnail before he does the video, he doesn't even do the video. Mm. It's kind of worthless. Like if you really want to grow as fast as possible. Because you need to have a thumbnail that sticks out, that people see. Because the most views you always get when YouTube recommends your videos further. Mm -hmm. So if you have a good thumbnail and YouTube recommends your video further, people will click on it immediately if you have a good title as well. Mm -hmm. This is one part. And the other part is watch time. YouTube ranks the videos that have the longest watch time. So if you have, so if you start a video and the beginning is shitty, you, you're not in the flow and you don't talk what the video will be about, uh, people will not watch the video, like, oh, not a lot of people. So you're wasting a lot of potential. So before I don't have a, a, a solid intro where people like know the value and people are getting like hooked. For example, what you could do is take out the best part of this interview put it in the beginning of the video, like 10, 15 videos, perhaps a part where I'm like swearing a little bit or like a bit emotional, mm -hmm. put it in the beginning and then make a cut and start a video. And then pe more people will watch the video, the pe video will rank better. Mm -hmm. And always also think about the title before, make it a little bit controversial, don't be afraid, you know. Mm -hmm. But the, coming back to your question, how I have my ideas is, it's weird, man. I, don't, I have met so many YouTubers through, through, the, through, the, year, through the years, through the months. Some guys like to plan it really hardcore, some guys like to go with the flow. But for me mostly, I really just think about what is, the, what is the biggest value I can give on my channel right now. And I just think about it. I think about the title um, most of the time and then I just like, I do it, yeah. This is it. 
but mostly also think about where you can give the most value to people. This is so poor. If people don't see the value, man, they will not watch your video. Perhaps your friend watch your videos because they like it, but otherwise they will not watch it. Okay, very, very good. A lot of questions popped in my mind because it's a very good direction we go right now. Really great questions and answers from my man Charlie. <laughs> and you answered already a few questions about the thumbnails, the good thumbnails. But could you maybe go a little bit deeper in what, what is a good thumbnail? Um, make it like what I realized for myself is, you know, you know how, how people say, um, people, most people think they know how marketing works, but then in real life they actually don't have a clue. So a good example is I always thought like, you know, if you put girls in the thumbnails, um, it seems to work for some channels, but my people are like more enlightened, you know, they will not like click more on that video just because it has some girls in the thumbnail. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then I did it once. Video got the, um, always, almost the most views because I had two girls in the thumbnail. <laughs> you know, like, wow. don't think too much, man. Like people are like, especially, especially, especially if guys are watching your video, man. Like, I mean, I'm the same. Like when I see a cute girl in the thumbnail or especially also like faces, people love faces. Yeah. Make the face like really big, really bright, like people laughing, people, people being emotional. Mm -hmm. It's like the best, the best thing ever. Like oh. emotions, people, faces, girls also really good. Like bright, um, bright colors of your, of your letters. And, and the biggest problem people have is, I'm sure you also don't know that, it's like the biggest hack ever. If you have the thumbnail, right? If you have it like here, the thumbnail, here in the in the in the bottom of the of the thumbnail, YouTube will put the number of how long the video is. Mm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. and if you have your face of the person there, or if you have um, your 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 letters there, then it's like it's not like perfect thumbnail. So leave the the bottom right corner. Leave it. Leave it out. Leave it out. Mm. Pictures. Da, da, da. And I, I also did it wrong sometimes. Um, the video still gets gets views, but this is like like a good advice I could give you. And also really really important, um, you also tag your videos, right? Do you tag yeah. them? Do you have a tool to tag them? Yes, you gave me one. Be like you. Okay, good. Also, use a tool. And what I realized also, it's weird, but YouTube kind of knows if you are using these keywords in your videos. Also. Um, mention them in the beginning as much as possible. It's something I didn't do. Like, that's weird, man. Yeah. But that's, to be honest, um, this is already too much advice I gave you here because I know some people will just watch that video for entertainment and the people that are really committed to start their own YouTube channel just should have started already like before watching that video till the end. So I, I think like it's already too much information, but it's how I would like approach it if a video want to do it really good. So very, very good. That was really, really interesting and a lot of value for myself yes. i just see there is so much there's so much you can can do but i guess for many people is like you said if if it's too much information it makes you more like it freezes you yes. and you don't take action so what would you advise them right now to start to take action now very simple <laughs> stand up from your seat and start recording because as soon as you record, you will realize, oh, oh this was not good, that's not good, or oh, that's not a good topic, and you will have another idea. And then you do a video, and then you have another idea, another idea. The, 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 when I did this 30-day challenge, that's the time where I had the most ideas, because I was so in the flow of making videos, ah, oh, this is a better topic, this and that is a better topic, you know? So yeah, yeah I, would, I would say that. Very cool. One little thing came in my mind. So you think about the title and the thumbnail before you do the video. I feel sometimes most of the time and that feels it feels for me sometimes a little bit like fake but I know I should do it because it will give me more success so yeah what's the right title what's the right title it depends really like what the video is about but if you really like let's see let's say that if you just do YouTube for fun and you don't care like how fast it grows chill you know do whatever title you think fits the video mm -hmm. but if you really want to grow mm -hmm. make it as controversial as possible for example, for this video here, I would say X, X under X guy starts YouTube channel from scratch and, blow, and, and blows his mind or something like that. Or X under X guy starts his channel and you will never believe what happened. Mm. 
people will click on that shit, man. Of course. Then you put a big picture of me, like ripped and shit. You know what I mean? Like, be, be, be controversial, man. Like, don't, don't bore. Because the lives of people are so fucking boring most of the time. And then you see a video, I interview with Charles, Rufio. Who the fuck know who I am, man? Like, no, don't know people know who I am. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. yeah. And then like put anorexic in the in the in the description, anorexic in the in the in the tags and everything, man. Like, you know what I mean? Ooh. That's like the thing I would do. That's the. So thank you so much. We will try that and we will see the results. I guess so. Yeah, yeah, man. yeah so Don't do it. No worries, man. Like you can change. You choose the title. You want the beginning of. In the beginning, I was also like, ah, oh, it's not, it's not me, you know, it's not like congruent to my personality. But you can rationalize in both ways. You can say, ah, oh, it feels fake, you know, it feels fake. But on the other side, if you don't make a controversial topic, you are a little bit of an egoistical guy because you care, you care more about what people think than how successful a video is. Because if you really care about your content, you really want that as many people see your video mm. because you really know your value is there. You know what I mean? Mm. So you can always rationalize, man. It's no, no, no wrong or right. Mm. So true, so true. So this is it with the interview with my friend Charlie. My meme. Check him out. I will link his channel in the description. Check it out.